Hello everyone, I'm Sito Zhang from Lightjoins International. In this talk, I will introduce you the application of the physics optics software Watch Lab Fusion in the field of optics education with several examples. Firstly, I'd like to introduce my colleagues and our teams. So I'm from Lightjoins, a high-tech innovative company in the city of Jena which is located in the center of Germany. Together with its partner company, Virusky Photonics, and the Applied Condition Optics Group of the University of Jena, we develop corresponding optical modeling and design technologies for the software which I fusion. Lightrans is also responsible for the technical support, trainings, and possible engineering projects related to the software which have fusion. Together with our distributors, software which have fusion has been used by the users around the world from different countries, different regions. And there are customers from the traditional optics industry. There are um, high-tech companies uh, who uses our software for their inno innovative product development and we also have a lot of uh, users from universities and educational institutes. So in this talk I'd like to start with a rough comparison between the theoretical study and laboratory experimentations and their roles in the education of optics. So theoretical study, well, since we are talking about physical optics, therefore I start with micro equations and look at those equations. I think for students, it often, often looks quite difficult and it requires certain levels of mathematical background knowledge to understand them. So therefore, it is often something turns out to be not so easy to illustrate for students in optics and there's no easy way to visualize or to uh, imagine the result and consequence from those formulas. And last but not least, I would also mention that in quite some optics lectures, you can find that the theoretical study is often disconnected from the real lab experimentations. And from the other side is the same, that when students are working on their uh, lab works, sometimes this is just kind of a pure lab work about how to adjust the optics, about how to control their light paths, and there's no connections to the uh, series. And furthermore, in order to maintain the lab, it's also, well, so I say this, it costs money and also costs human resources, and for students, also takes quite some time for them to align and adjust their setups before they can see uh, the expected effect for a certain effect. So in this talk, I like to suggest to use an intermediate step which connects both the theoretic study and laboratory experimentations in optics education. And that's what, uh, for that, Purpose, I recommend the physical optic simulation software, which like Fusion. If we compare that the simulation with theoretical pure theoretical study, it is usually much easier to see and to visualize the, the, the effect with the simulation. For example, in which lab you can have direct access to any field, any optics quantities, and all the required mathematical knowledge they are just embedded in the software itself so when you use this you you don't need to understand all the math all the math that is required to uh, make the simulation and in comparison to uh, lab works well obviously the benefit of a software is that you only need one platform one software platform and on that you can do all kinds of different physical optics ex experiments you can also easily exchange the component, the element, the devices in your light path. 
you can change the parameters as you like. And you can see the result immediately in the simulation without this complicated alignment and adjustment. And one last point I'd like to mention. A simulation software for optics is ready to use for online courses, which is not as quite uh, necessary during this special period of time. Next, I'd like to show some typical examples which you can very clearly demonstrate and show by use of the software virtual fusion. And the first example I select here is a demonstration of other theory of image information. Here, the modeling task is that we want to see how an image is generated when it goes through a complete imaging system. In this example, I choose a um, Gaussian beam, which represents a laser beam as a source, and it first illuminates a grating object. The grating is made of chromium. It's a metal grating, which, can, which is typically used as a test object in optics when you investigate, for example, the resolution of a system. And then I have a spherical lens together with a spherical lens, which makes a 10 times magnification imaging system. So in this sketch, you can see the principle how image is generated following our theory. So a greeting object will diffract the light into different orders. These orders are going to be collected by the image system and make finally an interference of them, of course, with a magnified uh, angle. Therefore, the final uh, interference, uh, interference pattern will look as a, a magnified image of the object. Now let's see what we can do with virtual life on this example. So first of all, you can, you can investigate exactly the diffraction property of a grating. In this case, we are simulating the field which is directly behind the chromium gratings. So here you can see the bright, the altering bright and dark stripes, which you can expect from a, a periodic chromium metal grating. Well, furthermore, if you go to the Fourier plane behind the first spherical lens, that is at the focal plane of its, uh, uh, behind the first lens, you can also see the Fourier image at this plane. And that is the key to explain the other theory. So you see different differential orders which are visualized on this plane. And this, uh, each order has different brightness according to the diffraction efficiency of the greeting. And finally, after the spherical lens, the second lens, different diffraction orders are collimated and they are put together to make the interference. That makes image of the grating. In virtual lab, all these pictures are directly taken as a result of virtual lab. And in virtual lab, you can also make post analysis of the simulation result. For example, here, on both the greeting object and the greeting image, I make a profile line. And along each proof of line, I can further investigate how this uh, field looks like. And in this case, I can even measure, for example, the distance between two stripes here in the object and also in the image. And in this case, you can easily find a 10 times magnification. Okay, next. I'm going to move to a more complicated situation according to the prediction of Ernst Arber. So he said, no microscope permits content to be seen separately if these are so close to each other that even the first light bundle created by the diffraction can no longer enter the objective. So let's have a look at this system. And in order to um, demonstrate this effect, we add um, additional aperture with varying width inside the system between the two lenses. So in the first case, we keep the aperture large. It has a width of 5 mm. And therefore, in a fully plane, you can see there are in total uh, visibly 9 different orders from minus 4 to plus 4 order. They all go through the system. 
animated image, finally you can see a, a very good high contrast image at the image plane. Now I reduce the width of the aperture. So previously it was, it was 5 mm, now it's only 3 mm. And it only allows a minus from the minus second to the plus five, uh, second in total five diff different orders go through the system. And here you can see the image obviously become smoother. You do not see this high resolved edge of this grating anymore. That is because of loose of the uh, spatial frequencies. If I reduce the aperture even more, now it has a width of only one millimeter. It is now even truncating partly the minus and first plus order. And in this case, if you look at the image, it is much more blurred. You can see it very, very easily. All these pictures are generated in virtual lab. Okay, finally, if I make the aperture so small with a one millimeter width, that only allows the zeroth order of this diffracted light go through the system. Now, in the image plane, you just see nothing but a magnified Gaussian beam, and there's no image. It exactly corresponds to what Abel has predicted hundreds of years ago. Now, without using any real lab component, you reproduce this experiment. You see the effect. And you also evaluate these uh, uh, parameters easily. You can see the result very easily directly in the virtual lab. That is our software virtual lab fusion. All right, next example, I'd like to show another typically discussed effect in physical optics education. That is um, Goose Henshin shift. In order to demonstrate this effect, we prepared an example according to a literature uh, reported by uh, in, in the literature. So in this case, we use a dielectric slab and we use a Gaussian beam as an input on this slab and we change the incidence angle. With respect to the incidence angle change, we also try to measure and visualize the Goose tension shift. And during that, we also change the absorption coefficients for the di dielectric slab. Okay, so here is the result. And here, on the right side, we have the simulation result from Watch Lab, and on the left side, we have uh, take the picture result from the corresponding reference. So you can see a very good reference, uh, a very good agreement between our simulation and the reference, which is done in a pure theoretical way. In this measurement, we choose with a flexibility in simulation, we choose a plane which is perpendicular to the direction of the reflection. And we use this coordinate system to measure the shift of the beam center. And that's the result we get on the right side. Or in contrast to the previous case where we use a collimated Gaussian, in this case, we introduce a focusing lens and we make a small Gaussian, focus Gaussian, on the front surface of the dielectric slab. In this way, we like to even visualize the very small Gaussian shift. And here you see the result. We pick up three different incident angles, 0 degree, 15 degree, and 30 degree. And in this case, we choose observation plane directly along the front surface of the slab. And for zero degree, you see the reflected beam, which is just directly in the center. While for 15 degree, as you can see in the curve, it shows a relatively strong Goose tension shift. And this can also be seen in the result that you have a slightly shifted spot. While in 30 degree, you don't see it again. And let's move on to some higher angles, for example, at 45 degree and 60 degree. At 45 degree, we can see obviously elongation of the beam. That is just because of geometry. But the center of the beam is still there. It's not shifted, almost not shifted. While if you go for 60 degree, you can see a very, very strong good tension shift in addition to the elongation of the beam size on this um, inclined plane. So again, all the results here are produced with a software watch lab 
And this is a this is a fact which you could hardly observe in the real life, but in the virtual lab you see it directly. Okay, as a third example in my talk, I like to show an interferometric system. And in this case, we choose to show a shearing interferometry. In this case, we first build up a beam expansion and collimation system. The input Gaussian has a relatively small diameter, only one millimeter. We use the objective lens together with the circular lens to make a beam expansion. So after that, we should have a much larger, larger beam diameter. And then we want to use a sharing interferometry, which is simply just a shear plate with a slight uh, wedge angle in another orientation. And we make an interference of the beams which has been reflected from two different surfaces of this shear plate. By that, we can observe the interference pattern and so that to tell the quality of the collimation from the previous system. Okay, with our software, we like to first analyze the collimation system. By varying the distance between the objective lens and the spherical lens, we can see at which position the output wavefront looks the best. And in this case, it can be seen that at about 448.2 mm, we have almost a plan wavefront. And then we put the sharing plate, a sharing interferometry behind the collimation system and to check the effect. First, if we place, if we set the distance between the two lenses exactly at the best distance, then you see the uh, interference pattern in the way that the fringes are perpendicular to the direction of the shearing. So horizontally you see two spots separated, and then vertically you see the interference pattern. That's exa exactly expected for perfectly collimated light. But if you go to some, um, let's say, not well collimated cases, now we change the distance between the two lenses, or you can also change the orientation of the lenses. And then you can see for uncollimated, not best collimated cases, the interference pattern is rotating. So you still see this uh, stripe lines, but it's rotates. It's not perpendicular to the direction of the shearing direction. And the same if you have a too large distance between the two collimation lenses. So again, all this simulation, all the result, all the figures that you see in this presentation, they are generated by using the software which I fusion. And you observe without really going to a real lab and you can see the result just as you will see in the real lab, but now with the computers, with which lab. In addition to the three examples I, pre I presented previously, I can mention that with the software Watchlab Fusion, you can do much more. For example, here I just list some more examples that you can easily find from our website, lighttrust.com. For example, we can show the diffraction pattern behind different apertures with different shape. Or you can demonstrate the classical effect, which is known as a Poisson's spot. So if you have a, have a, have a plate and you uh, check the diffraction effect at a certain distance behind it, you will see a bright spot inside, in the center. Or in case of grating diffractions, you can see the well-known table defect as well. And there are more examples. For example, you can show the 4F setup, which can be used as a laser beam clean up, a spatial filter, and even more. Based on the physical optic simulation software, which like Fusion, you can do much more than what I show in this presentation. And if you have more topics, more applications that you want to see in our software, please don't hesitate to contact us, to contact Lightruns. Thank you for listening.